Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Dynamics 365 Business Central launch event. My name is Andy Minarko, I'm the Principal Program Manager for uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. And today I would like to show uh, what's new in resource governance for Dynamics 365 Business Central Online. So the agenda for today's uh, session is first, I will talk about the resource governance mission, and then I will tell you a little story about the um, uh, resource governance uh, history for uh, Business Center Online, where we came from, where we are today, and where we are going in the future in uh, increasing the elasticity, availability, and throughput for your workloads in the cloud. And then I will show you a little bit of um, um, illustration of what is a shared multi-tenant architecture where your workload will run in the cloud. And I will show you uh, the biggest investment that we did last year, which is resource consumption tracking that allows us to improve a lot of areas in the elasticity of our service. And then uh, one of the, uh, the most recent improvement uh, that we will announce with this release is a new operational limits that will be previewed throughout this uh, next quarter. And I will, at the end, we, I will show you um, the preview practicalities. What can you expect throughout this um, uh, preview period? So without uh, further ado, let's, um, let's talk about the resource governance mission. So the mission for resource governance in Business Central Online is to offer optimal and fair resource consumption to all Dynamics 365 Business Center Online customer. Optimal means we want to offer maximal availability and performance for all resource consumption with minimal redundancy, minimal uh, idle resources, right? Uh, fair means we want to treat all customer and their user equally with respect to capacity and at the same time proportionally with respect to the licenses. We want to ensure that uh, all our customer and their user can consume how and what they can consume in their entitled manners, what they are uh, entitled to consume, which is the license specific features, how much. We want to ensure that they can consume as much as possible, as long as it is covered by their licenses. This is where we will introduce a new concept that does not exist in Business Center Online before, which is called entitlement quotas. We are planning to introduce this concept of uh, quotas in the next uh, uh, few semester uh, from now. And how fast can, uh, can they consume? We want to ensure they can consume resources. Uh, when I'm talking about resources, it means like uh, web service request resources, uh, compute resources, uh, storage resources. We want to allow or ensure customer can consume as fast as possible. We want to give top speed to all user as long as their consumption does not adversely impact others. And this is the concept that you are already familiar with, which is called operational limits. So um, before I go, uh, go on, I would like to give a, a quick um, uh, introduction of what the difference between quotas and limits, because sometimes people confuse them. So a quota in governance the terminology, quotas are like entitlements or rights where customer and their user can claim or exercise those rights, while limits are laws or rules that you need to follow. So essentially, when you want to exercise your right or you want to claim your entitlement, you can do that as long as you follow the laws and rules, right? At the user level, quotas are tiered. That means like different licenses has different um, uh, level of quotas, right? And they are cumulative. That means uh, in a customer, when you have um, when you buy more licenses, the amount of quota are, are accumulated such that all users in that um, in that uh, environment can actually consume those cumulative quotas and also transferable. It's what if one user doesn't use his, his quota. Other user cannot uh, use more than uh, what uh, he uh, that that's uh, entitled for his license, right? In the, for limits, it's actually different. For limits, they are fixed. That means that all users have the same amount of limit that they have to follow. And they are equal applicable to all users and non-transferable. That means if one user, uh, for example, follow the speed limit of a web service request, uh, let's say we have a 1,000 request per minute and they can only they, um, they submit a request for 500, does not mean the next user can submit like 1,500. Everybody has to follow the same limit, which is 1,000 requests per minute, for example, okay? So now let me tell you a little of history of where we came from. 
Like um, our story started with, like really recently in 2018, where there's a general availability of a Dynamics 365 Business Central online. In that year, we we lifted and shifted Business Central into Azure to run on a shared multi-tenant architecture, a software as a service or a SaaS architecture. When we built this uh, elastic service, we actually um, uh, follow the, the, the traditional uh, technique for elasticity, which is mounting uh, environments on multiple server instances or multiple VMs or hosts, right? Balancing workloads across those many hosts that mounted and grouping hosts uh, or, or um, the servers to serve different environments and also adding new hosts, which is scaling out. So these four techniques, which is mounting, balancing, grouping, and scaling, are what I like uh, fondly called the force horseman of elasticity, right? So when we are building our elastic service, at the same time, we actually already must govern uh, resource consumption in the cloud. So we started with very conservative operational limits, and we don't really introduce um, a, a, a definite quota. So right now, we don't have a, a in, we still have an indefinite quotas, right? And uh, recently, last year, we started to track resource consumption. So basically, we want to track all type of a workload and capacity unit. For example, a number of tasks, number of requests, number of session, execution time, memory consumption, storage consumption, all those uh, um, uh, capacity unit we want to track for every user, for every environment, and for every customer at any given moment and period. This allow us to lay the foundation to improve our elasticity techniques. So as our service mature, we are actually able to start uh, uh, creating more intelligent mounting, intelligent balancing, grouping, and scaling, as well as offer more expansive limits and quantifiable quotas. So let me show um, uh, just a quick um, illustration of what is a shared and multi-tenant architecture is. We start with the compute layer. Uh, imagine like there's a compute cluster that has a, uh, each cluster has many um, uh, uh, virtual machine or host, right? And each, uh, all of those hosts can share, uh, can be uh, grouped into different um, uh, host groups. And on the storage layer, we have a database server where inside the, uh, the server, you can have multiple pool, which are uh, sh uh, resources shared by um, a separate tenant databases, right? So imagine you have, let's say you have four uh, environment, T1, T2, T3, and T4, that actually sharing the same host, um, host resources, and they are connecting to the separate tenant databases in the, in the, in the, uh, in the database layer. Right? So if you notice, uh, when we're starting, uh, for example, uh, uh, tenant two, tenant three, and tenant four, they are needing more um, um, uh, computer resources, you can actually mount those um, environment on more hosts. For example, in the second host, you're mounting tenant two, three, four, and five, and then they're connecting to the, their own uh, tenant, data, um, tenant database in the, in the database server, right? And you can do the same when you have um, more um, um, uh, compute resources needed for those tenants. And you can see in this picture, tenant um, uh, environment three, four, and five are actually mounted on three hosts. That means like they actually have the resources of three hosts. Now, um, if you actually notice, for example, uh, ten, uh, tenant database four and five needing more juices, for example, they are running um, a long running queries, you can actually, um, uh, upgrade their pool such that they're going to a different pool that has more resources for those databases. So in this picture, uh, T4 and T5 tenant databases are moving to pool two that should have uh, less density and more resources for long running queries, for example. And you can do the same scaling independently a uh, compute layer um, uh, from the database layer. In this case, uh, well, let's say um, tenant four and five need more compute resources. We can see that we only have three hosts in the compute cluster, we can actually scale out and add more more hosts, uh, more hosts, like uh, two more hosts, and then like an, you can actually mount and T4 and T5 and group them in this uh, new, um, uh, new group of hosts. So in that case, uh, T4 and T5 will have more juice, more compute resources to run, like for, for example, parallel tasks, parallel uh, web service requests, etc. So that's a quick uh, introduction of a shared multi-tenant architecture, right? 
So let's talk about the resource consumption tracking. When we do actually uh, able to track uh, all the resource consumption, you can see in this picture, right, um, the cluster that I mentioned before is like this big uh, rectangular um, diagram. And inside each of these um, Inside of this cluster, you have all these resources. So you have the NST, which is the server instance to run your workload. You have gateway that handle your web service requests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The first thing that we do is actually create a new service, which is called local consumption tracker. And this local consumption tracker are really uh, there to implement operational limits. So it, it actually track all consumption of resources for per user and per environment in each cluster. The next service that we create for consumption tracking is the global consumption tracker. And this service is really um, uh, instrumental to implement uh, entitlement quotas in the future. The job of the global consumption tracker is to basically aggregate all uh, resource consumption from local uh, uh, consumption tracker, the LCTs in each cluster, and aggregate it across the whole tenant and then apply it to uh, the customer-wide uh, quotas. Okay. So what we, what we gain with consumption tracking is essentially in a lighter, lighter side, we kind of like a going from no or not, not having any or short term memory into having a long term memory. So like, um, like the myth that they're saying, uh, like Goldfish has no memory and Elephant has a long term memory. We are actually turning Business Center online from a Goldfish into an Elephant because now we actually can remember all type of consumption patterns for each tenant. For an illustration, I can show you one of this uh, diagram. For example, in this diagram, we know that like uh, one tenant uh, in, a, in a tracking period for one hour between noon and 1 p.m. is actually only peaking at 12.10. So you can see um, uh, it doesn't actually uh, consume resources all the time. There are only peak, peak period where it, it consumes more than uh, other times, right? Now, if you have all this type of consumption pattern for multiple tenants, you can actually group those tenants or environment that doesn't pick at the same time such that they don't overlap when they have a burst consumption. In this case, when you have more and more tenants, you can actually um, put them together in a resources where the resources are actually sufficient to, uh, to support all these um, tenants. For example, in 20 tenants, you don't really need um, uh, 20 times peak, uh, peak um, consumption because if you make sure that the, their consumption pattern does not overlap, then you can actually um, manage an optimal resource governance for, um, uh, for these tenants, okay? So now, uh, let me talk about the key improvement areas that are enabled by, this, uh, uh, by the new resource consumption tracking. The first thing that we are able to do is offering an operational limit that are fair and expansive. First, we will publish a clear user-based limit. If you probably notice, uh, most of our operational limits are environmental-based and environment-based, right? Now is, we're gonna publish a clear user-based limit that protect our service, ensure fairness among users, and inspire elasticity and scalability. The ETA for this um, uh, new user-based limit will be throughout this uh, next quarter, which is uh, quart uh, fourth quarter of uh, calendar uh, 2023, right? And at the same time, under the hood, we're also applying a dynamic resource-based limit. This is not published, but this is something that we use underneath our service to make sure that um, our service uh, are always uh, scalable, um, um, is protected, and uh, ensure fairness among customer and environment. So the user-based limits is, uh, are there to ensure fairness among users, while the resource-based limits are there to ensure fairness among customers or environments. And this is ongoing and continuous uh, improvement throughout the year, okay? The second thing that uh, we are able to improve with the resource consumption tracking is, like I mentioned before, you are, we are able to improve the elasticity techniques. So we can actually do intelligent balancing, mounting, grouping, and scaling. Would, because the consumption pattern and the uh, limit exhaustion signals can be used to actually distribute or rebalance workload more intelligently across mounted hosts and mount more environment on more hosts, a group hosts differently. For example, like um, heavy, um, heavy uh, consuming uh, uh, tenant will go with the less heavy consuming tenant such that they can actually uh, balance each other out, for example. And you can also like um, use 
the signal of a limit exhaustion and consumption pattern to scale out and add more hosts into the cluster. So we, the aim is like uh, we want to make sure that we uh, exploit all this technique before you actually throttle. Throttle, we should be as a last resort if we cannot actually expand our service to uh, accommodate your workload, right? And this is continuous ongoing improvement throughout the year. And finally, we want to uh, introduce entitlement quotas and flexible access consumption, and we will publish a user-based and tenant-wide quotas for a licensed and unlicensed user, respectively, uh, respectively, and allow buying access consumption. This should be um, estimated happening in the next two or three semester from now. Uh, the aim is like 99% uh, of our customer will be able to um, uh, uh, to consume resources under their quota. Not, not a lot of them will exceed it, but for some of the customer who wants to exceed their consumption, we'll allow them option to buy more add-on capacity or pay for pay as you go for their excess consumption. So all these improvements will be applied in a many different type of resources. We'll focus more on the web service request handling resources first, computer resources next, and then uh, later on on the uh, uh, database or uh, storage uh, resources. So let's talk about like um, the new operational limits that's coming this quarter. Okay. Before I talk about um, uh, what's the new operational limit that's coming, let me introduce you the concept of um, uh, operational limit. Because there are three types of operational limits that uh, we can actually use to uh, govern resources in the cloud. There are essentially for a complete governance, you need a, a speed limit, concurrency limit, and execution term limit. For this, I'd like to use a loose analogy of a, like a highway, um, highway management, uh, traffic management. Okay, if you imagine a stretch of a highway as um, a limited uh, server or host capacity, traversing that highway represents consuming a portion of that capacity. And cars in that highway represent a workload submitted by our customer and their users. In this case, um, the customer or user are color coded like a blue customer, green, orange, and yellow, right? So in this case, uh, in this analogy, all users should enter or merge their traffic into the highway at a certain speed limit. They should not exceed that speed limit, right? And then higher toll charges that you pay for represent how far you can go. So that's actually representing the premium licenses that you can buy to consume more um, uh, quotas. So first, uh, let me introduce what is a speed limit means. In speed limits, uh, speed limit essentially uh, in the highway analogy is to control how fast cars enter to the highway. So in business center online or um, in uh, software service, it is to control how fast workloads enter our system. So if all um, cars are entering the, the highway more or less under the speed limit, you can actually imagine the highway capacity will fill up with more or less the same number of blue cars, green cars, yellow or orange, right? When the capacity is filled up, you might want to redirect traffic to other uh, accessible highway. That is representing rebalancing workload in our uh, BC online, right? And then, or you might actually want to like um, opening up more highway that accessible for certain customer. That that's uh, represent mounting more environment to more hosts in a cluster, or even, for example, um, uh, dedicating some highway for just blue or orange car. That essentially grouping those um, um, uh, grouping those. Um, uh, uh, workloads that uh, need more resources, for example. And finally, you can basically build a new highway from scratch, which represents scaling out in our in our uh, BC online world. Okay. So the next concept is a concurrency limit. Uh, by the way, speed limit and concurrency limit already exists in our uh, business central online. It just right now it's still in a, on a per environment basis. So we will introduce a per user basis later on. So in a concurrency limit, essentially imagine all cars are entering the highway more or less under the speed limit, but there are the, there are blue cars that coming from different entry point. So you end up with like more blue cars at the same time in the in the highway, and that cannot be controlled with speed limit. So we have to introduce a new limit, which is concurrency limit, to control how many cars are present at any given moment in the highway or in our role in BC Online uh, to control how many workloads are concurrently processed in the system. 
Now, um, we actually already have this speed limit and concurrence limit. What we are missing that the in the future that we would like to introduce is a new limit, which is called execution time limit. So imagine in this highway analogy, when you have cars coming, coming in at the, um, under the, the speed limit, and they are actually not entering uh, the highway from uh, multiple entry point, but some of these cars are actually stretch limousine or a long trailer or truck. And you can imagine in, uh, the capacity of the highway fill up with this long bl uh, stretch blue car. So that uh, represents essentially uh, a long running workload in our system. So we need a new limit, uh, an additional to speed and concurrency limit, which is execution time limit to control how long workload are processed in our system. So the preview that's coming this next quarter is first um, in the early, um, uh, early quarter, uh, next quarter, we will actually uh, upgrade the old concurrency limit for scheduled tasks from three concurrently running tasks per environment into five concurrently running tasks per user. So we can imagine now, if you have more user in the environment, the throughput for, for your environment can get bigger. If you have, for example, you have two users, you can run like a 10 scheduled tasks in parallel. Or if you have three users, you can run 15 tasks in parallel. Previously, you can only run three per environment. So this is a, a huge uh, increase in the throughput for your workload, okay? The next improvement that we're planning is actually changing the speed limit from the old, um, uh, for web service requests, from the old 600 um, uh, requests per environment per minute into actually 6,000 requests per user in the previous five minute sliding window. So this actually gives you flexibility to have a burst uh, peak of um, uh, requests. For example, if you want to have in the first minute to have 6,000, you can do that. You, as long as you make sure that across a five minute sliding window, you maintain the number of um, uh, requests in that, in that period, okay? So that is coming in the mid quarter, um, which is around, around November, uh, November, December time, timeline, right? And finally, Another concurrency limit that we will introduce is the web, also for web service requests. And this time, we're not changing the number too much. What we're changing is the, the, the denominator of this limit. So before, we are, um, we are allowing only 10 concurrently handled um, uh, web service requests, where five is processed and 95 queued. Uh, per environment, now we're actually uh, allowing per user. So we, uh, we are opening up the uh, parallel, uh, parallel web service requests. 100, the same number, 100 concurrently handled, five uh, process, and 95 queued, but per user. So that means uh, when you have environment with more user, you get more throughput. That's the, uh, that's the last improvement for this quarter that we're aiming at the end of this quarter, okay? And finally, in the future, you can expect the introduction of the execution time limit that I mentioned before. For example, uh, if, you, if we have like um, uh, a server instance with like four cores, right? In a five minute elapsed time of uh, sliding window, that four core actually allow four times five, 20 minute execution time. So within that 20 minute execution time, what is the X minute that we allow per user to consume? And then underneath that, under the hood, we will actually make sure that each environment does not consume up to Y percent of the total execution time or Z percent of the total execution time in a cluster. So those are uh, limits that coming in the future that we plan uh, for uh, incoming releases. So uh, finally, uh, I would like to show the preview practicalities, what can you expect throughout this uh, preview period? So throughout um, October, November, December, we are actually making sure that this operational limit are continue to be monitored and fine-tuned to provide higher throughput than the old one. So uh, expect, expect it to change a lot. It's subject to change, right? And the throughput will not be uh, in a, will not be increased in a big bang manner, right? Like uh, you, you will not see like for example. Currently, you are only run three concurrent tasks per uh, per environment um, um, per environment, and suddenly you will see like an unlimited number of tasks in parallel per per, uh, per environment. Right? That's not going to happen. But we're going to do it gradually. So we will do a gradual uh, throughput increase. Let me just give you an illustration. For example, we will increase it from uh, from three to six or, or uh, nine um, nine parallel tasks per, um, per environment. And then we monitor um, the situation, and then we keep increasing it three times, 
four times, five times. We keep continuing increasing until we have an optimal, optimal throughput that we can provide, right? And that is uh, essentially what we plan. So we want to make sure that um, we uh, communicate those uh, incremental uh, increase of throughput throughout the, the quarter, throughout the, uh, the preview period. Uh, we'll announce any changes in our release plan. So watch out for the minor uh, 23.x releases and also in other documentation, especially the operational limit documents, because there's going to be a lot of um, updates in the document uh, throughout the period. Okay, and finally, uh, we always appreciate your feedback and suggestion. Uh, please use our Yammer channel to, to contact us, to tell us what have you been um, monitoring and what you see in, uh, in terms of your, your um, uh, throughput for your workloads, right? And uh, give us feedback and suggestion. So continue um, uh, getting, getting back to us using uh, the Yammer, our documentation, our Twitter, and uh, also uh, please join us, uh, sign up for BC Office Hour especially if it's relevant with the resource governance uh, upgrades in the future. So thank you, and uh, with that, uh, that concludes our session. I look forward to seeing you soon um, in the Q&A sessions uh, remotely and also in person in Directions Conference. Thank, thank you for your attention. See you soon.